Hi, my name is Tommy Jepson. Uh, I'm a senior here at uh, Luddy studying informatics with a cognate in business. Um, and I'm a peer advisor with Luddy Career Services. Today, I'd like to thank and introduce Jeremy to Fawcett from Deloitte uh, for taking the time out of his day uh, to meet with us, tell him uh, you know, a little bit more about his story um, and give kind of his experiences at Luddy. Um, so thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, not a problem. Awesome. So um, before I kind of get into things, I'd love if you could just do a quick introduction, kind of, you know, what you did at Luddy and then kind of what you're doing now at Deloitte as well. Yeah. So hi, my name is Jeremy Fawcett. Uh, 2018 graduate from the School of Informatics, Computing, and Engineering. Um, since graduating, I've been at Deloitte Consulting, where I am a consultant. I've been with the firm for uh, almost four years now, um, specializing in technology consulting. And specifically within that space, I um, focus on modernizations of legacy systems. So taking clients, very um, outdated um, systems, and modernizing them, putting them on uh, modern tech stacks, putting them in the cloud, um, serving in a functional role. So um, the roles that I typically work in sit between the business and the developers, um, combining both my um, technical acumen that I acquired at Luddy and the soft skills, business skills that I've developed um, to kind of bridge the gap between business and technology for our clients. Awesome. Thank you. So kind of going off of that, you talk about you have this kind of cross-functional role almost. You kind of sit in between business and technology on your project. Um, talk about how, you know, your your degree at Luddy has helped you within that and kind of facilitate that role specifically, um, being, you know, very technical, being a computer science major, but also being able to have those business conversations and being a part of those meetings as well. Yeah. So when I was at Luddy, I actually had the privilege of where I studied both computer science and informatics. Um, and honestly, both of them have helped me um, in my career in technology consulting. So on one side, you have computer science, very technical. Uh, all of my coursework was focused on um, you know, computer theory, programming, software development. Um, all my internships were in software development as well. Um, so while my current roles um, being in this functional role, sitting between business and technology, um, are not coding positions anymore, I still use the foundation of coding, which is uh, problem solving. Um, you know, coding is all about taking this large, complex problem and breaking it down into smaller, bite-sized pieces, solving those smaller pieces, um, and then putting those pieces together to solve a larger problem. On the flip side of that, on kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, you have informatics, um, which I think the field of informatics is all about. How do you apply technology? So while computer science is about the underlying hardware and code, uh, informatics is how do you take that and actually apply that to solve real world um, problems? And I actually think informatics could be renamed as a technology consulting degree um, because the essence of technology consulting is how do I use technology to solve real world business problems? So uh, with informatics, you learn kind of a breadth of technology. So you can sit at a multitude of tables and have um, all of these conversations with uh, different stakeholders. You can have conversations with people that focus in all different types of technology. That's very crucial uh, in a field like technology consulting, um, where you may be on uh, one project for six months and then do something completely different for the next year. Um, it's being adaptable, it's being able to pick up new technologies quickly, and it's being able to uh, sit at a multitude of tables, digest um, what you're hearing, and then use that to uh, come up with a path forward and solve the problems that uh, our clients face us with. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. And I think, you know, you have a really cool you know, story being a, a double major with computer science and informatics, having that, you know, understanding of how do I break down technical problems and how do I go about developing things? But also, like you said, that informatics background. Um, and I love that you said, you know, you could rename <laughs> informatics yeah. as almost like a technology <laughs> consulting degree. Um, something that I really relate with. Um, I'm interested in technology consulting, um, something yeah. that I will be involved in one day with. So I've seen that within my classes specifically. Um, I think in I-308, um, it's a database class. And yep. one, one of the things that we had to do was, you know, you get a business problem, you get a, you get a statement from whatever business they want to build a, a database and you have to go about designing it and thinking about how you want yep. to develop it and then actually go and do it. And I think 
it really simulates kind of how that process works in the real world. Um, and I think it's a unique position that informatics and I guess people at Luddy in general um, get to be a part of with those type of classes, kind of simulating how technology is developed and worked when, within the real world. So uh, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I actually remember taking I-308 and I think <laughs> that class is a perfect um, kind of case simulation. Um, I remember when I was taking it, I still wasn't very familiar with what consulting was. And um, we may or may not have talked about consulting specifically in that class, but looking back on it, um, that problem, the, the database problem, the main project of that class is effectively a large scale simulation of what a real world problem would be for a client. Yeah. And, and I had the same experience um, when I took that class and, you know, it's challenging. It's not easy, but I think it's yeah. a great introduction to, you know, the concept and the idea of it. Yep. Awesome. So kind of looking back, you know, post-graduation, you've been out of school for a few years now, but if you were to kind of go back, um, you know, get your undergrad again, what would you have done differently at Luddy specifically? Would you have done a different major? Would you have taken different classes? Um, would you yep. have been involved in different clubs? What would you have done differently? Yeah, for me, um, and it's actually something that I know you're involved with, is I actually would have been a part of the Luddy Consulting Association. Um, for me, when I was uh, at Luddy, I actually did not know of, it, of its existence. And I think that's mainly a product of the fact that I didn't actually know what consulting was until I was a senior. Um, I kind of thought I was on this path of where I was for sure going to go into software development um, with my computer science background. It wasn't until um, an internship uh, in between my junior and senior year where I was kind of describing to this mentor I had at the company I was with um, what I wanted to do. And I made this statement that I want to bridge the gap between um, business and technology. And he said that I should look into consulting, um, which I was not familiar with at the time. So I didn't really um, become knowledgeable in consulting until I effectively started interviewing with Deloitte. Um, so I think looking back, if I would have become more knowledgeable with it when I was a freshman, sophomore, if I would have then uh, joined, you know, the Luddy Consulting Association, it would have given me a big jump start on case interviews, which I um, luckily learned in uh, lightning speed ahead of my Deloitte interviews. Um, but I would have had more familiarity and comfort comfortability with them going into interviews my senior year. And then also just would have, um, you know, had more experiences and more knowledge of what consulting was as I actually started my career post-graduation. I'm really glad that you said that about the LCA because <laughs> um, that's, that's something I'm passionate about. Um, yep. It's a club that I'm a part of, but I had a very similar experience to you, just undergrad in general, like coming into Luddy, you know, you have these different majors, but when it comes to actually like understanding, like what kind of careers can I get out of this? People think of like software development, people think of like yep. project management, but this idea of consulting is so like foreign, unless somebody really teaches you or tells you about it, you don't really know much about it. Um, and I took a class freshman year, I-101, um, and one of the professors came in and they had kind of done a guest lecture. And they were talking about consulting and got me involved with Serve IT. And that's kind of how I was first introduced to consulting, um, which is a non-for-profit tech consulting clinic yep. through Luddy. Um, but through that, I was able to, you know, understand what's consulting. And, you know, like you'd said, once you kind of understand what consulting is, you realize if you're an informatics major, like, wow, this is very similar to what my actual degree is. Yep. Um, and, and it's really cool. And it's hard because if you're trying to get into it, you know, you're not as prepared if you don't necessarily know all the information about consulting or how to prepare for those type of interviews. And I think the LCA is a great way to be prepared to understand what case interviews are, how you go about networking with firms, understanding kind of how consulting works, how yep. projects work, and specifically technology consulting, what technologies are being used today. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really passionate about the LCA, but I'm glad you said that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, it still worked out for me. I still landed at Deloitte Consulting. Um, but if I had been a member of the LCA, it would have prevented a lot of uh, last minute cramming on my part of uh, how do I tackle a case interview? What is consulting at the foundation of it? Because consulting can be a very difficult thing to explain when you're in college. Um, and yeah, I would have been much more prepared uh, and uh, probably less stressed going into interview senior year if I had been a member of that uh, throughout my entire college tenure. Yeah, I, I definitely can relate to that. And uh, something I do want to highlight, if you're interested in consulting in general and you're in Luddy, feel free to, you know, reach out to career services. We have case interviews, mock case interviews, all that stuff. Um, we can kind of help you with 
that as well and just kind of approaching and understanding what consulting is too. So if you're interested, um, do reach out. Um, but another question that I have is kind of looking back again at college, seeing how technology has changed just since you've graduated. What's one thing or one technology that you wish you kind of had deep dived into, um, you know, later within your college years? So let's say junior or senior year, what's one technology that you wish you kind of um, started to explore more before you actually started working for Deloitte? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so on the technology front, I would probably say um, cloud computing. So anyone with a very technical background will know that uh, the cloud is something that's been around for a very long time. It's just in recent years become a corporate buzzword, um, even though it's been around since you know, 50, 60, 70 years, <laughs> um, companies are really just starting to catch on to it. Um, and once something like this catches wind in corporate America, everyone wants to do it. So it's very popular right now. So, and what I focus on um, at Deloitte is modernization of legacy systems. What that entails is putting those systems uh, on the cloud. Um, a lot of our clients are moving away from on-prem um, and moving their services to the cloud. So while in college, obviously being a computer science major, I had a pretty good understanding of how it worked um, from a deep, uh, I would say technical aspect of it. Um, I knew kind of all of the, uh, the backbone of it, I would say, um, but I did, wasn't necessarily familiar with what companies were actually, how companies were actually applying that, right? I knew how it worked. I knew how to uh, develop um, and code in the cloud per se, but I didn't necessarily know how that was actually being applied to the real world. Um, I didn't realize that companies were modernizing their 50, 60 year old systems and putting them in the cloud. Yeah. And I think that's something that is really important to highlight too, is that cloud computing is this huge buzzword and there's a lot of these mm -hmm. big buzzwords out there, but you know, you can be the most technical, but you also want to have this understanding of how the technology is, is utilized and how people are actually strategizing on how we develop it and how yep. we use it in different ways. Um, there's actually a class that I took um, last year um, I-399 um, project management for the cloud. And I think that's really something that is unique to Luddy in that we have these new classes that are coming out with these lecturers that, you know, are working with these emerging technologies that can teach you about how these, these technologies are being used. And I think um, if there's anything I want to highlight from that is that, you know, there's classes out there that you can learn about these emerging technologies, how to use them, how to develop in them. Um, so, so reach out to these professors and ask them questions because um, you don't have to think about it after you graduate. You can think about it, you know, your sophomore, junior, senior year, freshman year, whenever you can. Um, so, so try to, you know, emerge yourself in those technologies if you're interested. Um, one last question that I have for you is kind of when you're going back and you're, you're coming to IU and you're, you're doing some networking or you're doing recruiting for Deloitte, um, what are some things that stand out to you specifically from students when you're networking with them, um, particularly from Luddy? Yeah, um, I would say there's three things that really stand out when I network with someone. Um, one, it's, do you have a passion for learning and are you adaptable? Can you learn new things? Um, two, do you ask effective questions? And three, can you explain something to me like I'm five? So starting with um, the passion for learning, so I think some students will come in and they um, will seem to have the answer to everything right off the bat. And that can be great. But if you don't have the drive and willingness to learn new things, eventually that's going to catch up with you. So you can know everything right now, but eventually you're going to hit a point in time where you're faced with a problem and you don't know the answer to it right off the bat. If you can't demonstrate that you have a passion for continuing improving yourself and growing and learning new things, learning new technologies or learning new processes, learning how to enhance your skill set, eventually you're going to hit a problem that you can't solve. I rather much have someone that doesn't necessarily have the answer to something right away, but they can demonstrate to me that they do have a passion for continually improving themselves. They have a drive for learning and new, uh, learning new things, um, especially in a field like technology consulting, where again, you can be on a project doing something for six months and then decide that's not actually what you want to do. And you go on to a project doing something completely different for the next six months or the next year. You have to show that you can actually be adaptable and learn something new on the fly. Um, because 
the the issues that big companies are facing these days um, with technology are very complex and convoluted. So many of the times I get faced with issues on a daily basis that I don't know the answer to right off the bat, but I can take them back and I can figure them out. Secondly, um, with the asking effective questions. So I think for the most part, we all know that when you're networking with someone or when you're in an interview, you are to come prepared with questions to ask. I think most people know that at the end of an interview, you have a set of questions that you ask your interviewer. But I think a lot of students um, will treat that like a checkbox that they're just trying to tick off rather than using that as an opportunity to actually ask an effective question, ask something that actually is important to you, ask something that actually matters to you. I can typically tell when someone's just asking a generic question that they don't really care about the answer versus when someone's asking me a question that actually matters to them. You should be using it as an opportunity to learn about what is the culture like this company? Does it align with your values? Um, what is the type of work like? Does it, again, align with what you're wanting to pursue? When you're doing networking and you're interviewing, it's not just the company that interviewing you. You're also interviewing the company to make sure it's the right fit. So use that time to ask questions that actually matter and are impactful um, to the decisions that you're going to make. Uh, one question that I always used to ask at the end of all of my interviews is I would ask the interviewer, uh, over the last five years, how has the type of work that you've done changed or how has your company changed? Um, and how has that been of a benefit to you? Because growing and evolving is something that was really important to me um, in a role that I was looking for. I Early on, um, my freshman year, I actually had an internship at a very uh, outdated and stagnant company, that, the type of company with six foot high uh, cubicles. And you could just tell that nothing ever evolves or changes there. And I didn't want to go back to a company like that. So I actually used that question and all the companies that I would interview with to figure out, you know, do I think this company is the right fit with me for, for me? Do I think that they're actually growing and evolving? Do I think my work, the type of work that I would will do will grow and evolve and help me become um, better uh, in my career? And then lastly, can you explain to something, something to me like I'm five? Um, if I see something on your resume and maybe I don't have a lot of familiarity with it, can you explain that to me and give me a, um, a surface level of understanding of it? You don't have to teach me every detail and intricacy. I'm not looking to become an expert in this. Um, you already might be the expert. I'm just looking, can you give me and explain to me a fundamental understanding of whether it's your hobby or an experience that you had at an internship or a technology that you know a lot about? Can you just give me a surface level understanding of it to where I could then hold a conversation with you? Um, similarly, like when you're doing a case interview, um, I care less about the final result or the final answer that a student arrives at. I care much more about the thought process they implemented to get to that answer. And can they actually walk me through step by step how they arrived at that answer effectively? Can they communicate that process to me? Yeah, no, that, that was great. I, I really like what you said there, um, especially with those three points. I think the first one, you know, kind of going on to this idea of like, you need to be curious. I think that's mm -hmm. one thing that I've learned in college, at least, is like, it helps to want to learn more about things and not just that you have to learn, essentially. It's yeah. so like when, you, when, you're, when you're interested in something, especially when you're majoring something that you're passionate about, um, you're going to continue to just learn more and you, you want to just like deep dive into everything you can because it's just what you want to do. Um, so, so I love that you said that. And the other point is like intentionality, especially when it comes to networking. One thing that I've always yep. tried to do, and I think I've kind of learned from you um, throughout my process in college is like, you know, this is a great opportunity, regardless of what happens, to have a conversation with somebody who has experience in the world with what you're interested in now, at least. Yep. So take that time to, you know, ask those questions that you get the answers that you want, you know. Yep. If you're asking questions that are just like, you know, streamlined because I'm in an interview, it's, you're not going to get what you actually are going to get out of it. If you're asking meaningful yep. questions about things that you're passionate about, things you want to continue to learn about and understand what they do, um, it'll allow you to understand if that's a good fit. Like you said, you're not just interviewing for a company and they're, they're not just interviewing yep. you, you're interviewing them. Um, so I love that you said that. And um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed being able to have this conversation with you. 
Uh, I hope that this is really helpful for students. Um, I think this is something that if I was a freshman or if I was a sophomore, being able to go to a video like this would definitely help me understanding, you know, where's a good start if I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my career. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, have this conversation. Yeah, not a problem. I enjoyed speaking with you. Awesome. Well, thanks again, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah, have a good day. Awesome.